Hey guys, welcome to the channel. It's Jack with Stronghold Strength and Conditioning. And today, I've got a 15 minute full body workout, no gym required, that you could be doing right at home following along with me here. But before we get into it, make sure you take a moment and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future content like this. Every Thursday, I'm putting out videos showing you how to resolve aches and pains, prevent injuries, and overall optimize your performance. That includes workouts like these. So go ahead and jump on it. Ready? Let's get into it. Alright guys, so today, like I said, we got a 15 minute full body workout. All you need is yourself and a mat, and you don't even need the mat if you don't have one, so don't worry about it. We're going to be going through a nice six exercise, bit of a flow here that'll go from one exercise to the next pretty easily, and we'll be spending about two minutes on each exercise, taking our time, just feeling the movements themselves, and doing a little bit of play in here. So follow along, hope you guys enjoy it, let's dive in. All right, guys, get ready. We're gonna start with a bear crawl here. We want the hands and wrists below the shoulder directly, maybe even slightly more in line with the lip, nipple line here. We need the knees below the hips, and we're just holding this position with the knees pulling wide. My abs are engaged, so I have a nice neutral spinal column here, my chin just tucked toward my chest. And we're just starting with a little 10 second hold there, and we're gonna increase the time a little bit with a few more as we go. Uh, advancing it a little bit here. So put those hands back down. We're gonna come in for another one. Shoulder blades rolled down and back, abs engaged. Glutes are engaging by pulling those knees wide. You might feel your quads a bunch otherwise if you don't actually get those glutes to engage here. So we really need to make sure that the knees are slightly pulling wide. I'm kind of in my big toe, second toe there on the footing. Go ahead and rest again here. We're doing a few seconds off in between, a few seconds on. So next one's gonna be about 20 seconds we're gonna hold here. Go ahead, place those hands, get the shoulders set, engage the abs, and then hover. Now on this one, if you wanna take it a little bit further, you can start to move with an opposite arm to opposite leg movement. I'm still keeping those knees just hovering over the mat as I move here, and still trying to maintain that neutral spinal column as I move. If you're not ready for that yet, don't worry about it. Stay in that neutral hold and just keep it there for right now. If you wanna try the movement, go ahead and toss it in and enjoy it, guys. We got a couple more forward and back here, just whatever space you have to work with. Very good. On the next movement, we're gonna be going into hip cars here. So we're gonna do controlled articular rotation. So take a second, we wanna set up once again with that strong base that we had from the bear crawl. And with that position, with the hands set and one knee down, we're gonna first of all kick back, getting the glutes engaging, and then try and work a full circle of the hip, bringing it out front. I go one direction, and then I'm coming back the other direction. Knee high, out to the side, around to the back, getting that glute engaged in extension again, and then back down. We're gonna do a few reps here in this. When I do that kickback, I want to make sure that my abs stay engaged so I don't feel my low back engaging or arching in that position at all. That's a big key here, and I'm trying to minimize really a lot of the pelvic movement through my core in this position. It's harder to do than it might sound, so just be patient with yourself. Feel the movement the best you can. We're going to do three reps here, and then we're going to switch sides. So this is our third one, both directions there. Very good. And then plant that leg, reset your positioning a little bit. Take a second if you need in between, because here we go for the other side. So set those shoulders, elbows rotating in toward my body. There's my kickback, glutes are engaged. I'm trying to minimize my shift as much as possible with the abs engaged here.
All right, great job. Take a second, get some pressure off those hands and wrists, roll the neck if you need out here. And we're gonna go into a scapular push-up next. So we wanna set those hands well once again, and we're coming out into a tall plank position. Elbows rotating in toward the, toward the thighs, toward the ribs. And then I'm gonna do a little bit of a round of the shoulders here, pushing the floor away through those arms, and then dip back between. So we're doing three reps at a time again, keeping it simple. My butt is tight, my stomach is tight. The only thing that's moving are my scapula, and that is the challenge here. We really wanna keep the scapula the thing that's moving. I get a little bit of spinal flexion in the thoracic spine at the full protracted position there, but that's okay in that position. We wanna maintain neutral as much as possible otherwise throughout this movement. So each time planting well, getting the hands below the shoulder, getting the glutes engaged, getting the abs engaged, and then from there, letting the shoulder blades push the floor away and then sink together on the upper back. All right, we got one more round of scapular push-ups here. So once again, set that base well, elbows spun in, glutes, abs engaged, and then glide those scapula along the rib cage, pushing the floor away and then sinking those shoulder blades together, keeping the glutes tight, keeping the abs engaged, controlling that lumbar spine really well here. So we got three push-ups here with those scapula. And then we're gonna take a little break and we're going into a downward dog. So we're gonna be walking in and out of downward dog position a few times. We'll take a couple breaks in here in this one as well. Go ahead and start in that full plank position. Again, your feet can be slightly wider than the hips. And depending on your flexibility here, you might need to pedal out a little bit with the um, ankles. It's okay if your feet don't quite touch the floor flat there. Our main goal is to feel like the elbows are still spinning in toward my body. So I feel a nice tension through the line of the back of the arm into the armpit and into the rib cage and scapula there. So that's where I wanna take the pressure ultimately from that downward dog is in the scapula, in the shoulder blades, in the underside of the arm each time. So be very conscious of that. When you push back, you are pushing the floor away, you're pushing yourself into the legs there, into those hamstrings, and you're trying to sink in your chest toward your body, toward your thighs as much as possible on each rep. Hold it a few seconds, really push that floor away, and sink into it as much as possible. Thinking of trying to settle the forearms toward the floor might be helpful, or trying to bend the elbow slightly toward the floor as you keep the arms still straight. Now, don't hear me wrong here, keep that arm straight, but imagining the elbow going toward the floor and almost trying to rest on the floor will be helpful in keeping that lat engaged in that position. All right, this is our last round with the downward dog here to the plank. One thing I should mention is every time we're in that plank, we still want that solid setup, so abs engaged, glutes engaged. Shoulders in a nice neutral position overall in that. And when we push back there, once again, just transitioning so those hips are doing a lot of hinging here in this movement itself. Okay, one more rep in here, and then we're gonna be switching to a little bit of a walkout position. So we're gonna start in that plank again to a deep squat with flexion. So it's okay, we're not trying to actually get into a deep squat that we would have when we're loaded with a barbell. But we're gonna walk it back. I'm gonna have rounded upper back and I'm gonna walk back out to my plank. So we're going from plank, a couple walks in, my knees bend, my feet bend a little bit there, extension at the toes, and I'm into that deep squat. My knees are wide, my hands are between my legs here, and I'm as rounded as I need to be there. Now if you can't quite get your feet flat just yet, that's okay. Don't worry about it, we're gonna do a few at a time. You might find that your mobility opens up a little bit more as we go, and then it's, it is what it is today. So we just work with it as it is. Each time coming into the squat where you can, getting those feet as close to flat as possible, 
and then walking back out to that plank. If you're limited in that squat range of motion and you can't get those feet flat, there's a good chance it has to do with your ankle dorsiflexion and that might be an area to focus on with your mobility overall is kind of improving the ability of that knee to bend over those toes in this position of a deep squat. Very good, taking a short break once again and then setting up for one more round here. We're gonna go in from that walkout position, lock that plank in, and then walk those hands in, transitioning the hips back, the knees bent in deep flexion, and then walking back out from there. In that deep squat, you can play with a few things as well, just kind of holding that, feeling the knees opening wide, relating to any tension that you feel in the legs there. You might wanna notice if you're restricted at the legs, the hips are trying to pull in, you can't get those knees wide. We can learn a lot. Our last move here is going to be a glute bridge. So I'm gonna transition to my back. I wanna pull those heels to the glutes as tight as possible, roll my shoulder blades down and back, and actually flatten my back to the floor. Each time I hip up, I'm gonna drive the hips high, open the knees wide. So I should feel my glutes doing a ton of work here. My quads and my hamstrings should not be taking over the movement. In fact, it should be exactly as it's called, a glute bridge. You should feel your glutes doing the work. Nothing else takes over here. And that is a common mobility issue as well that I see in a lot of people is just, we have the quads, we have the hamstrings trying to take over something that the glutes should be doing. And it just shows a little bit of a lack in neural engagement in that area. We just aren't able to activate it. We don't have the movement patterning. So each time, squeeze at the top, really get yourself to hone in on feeling those glutes driving the hips high in this one. Take a second as you need here. Reset the position if you need. We keep those feet in tight to the glutes as much as possible. And this would be something that is a little bit hard for people as well. We see that the feet try and slide out or move out further. And that is why we get more engagement of the quadriceps and hamstrings. We're in for another few reps here. We're gonna do a couple sets of these and this is our last exercise guys. So finish out strong and I hope you're feeling good about it so far here. Get those glutes up, knees wide, hips high. That is the key for getting the glutes, all three gluteal muscles engaged in this hip. All right, there you guys have it. 15 minutes, full body workout, you, a mat, and maybe not even the mat if you didn't have one, which is all the better, right? If you guys like this video, make sure you let me know by clicking that big thumbs up down below and share it with a friend. You know they need workouts right now too where they can keep that social distancing going. And if you guys have not already, take a moment to hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future workouts and content like this. Every Thursday, we're putting out videos talking about resolving aches and pains, preventing injuries, and overall optimizing your performance. Really doesn't get much better than that, so jump on it. Last but not least, if you guys do not have some form of mobility programming in place, that is one of the biggest mistakes that I see. We go into the gym, we focus on our strength and conditioning, and that really is 
kind of the last piece of the puzzle. We need to have the regular things in place like a good nutrition program, a mobility program, and then finally focus on that strength and conditioning portion. So if you don't have anything in place right now, take advantage of seven free days that I've got programmed down below for you. It's called the seven day mobility training challenge and it'll at least give you a little jump start to see where you might have some more mobility needs. So like I said, down in the description, seven days free mobility training all years. All right guys, welcome to the Strong Home Hold Army. I'll see you guys next week.